Uh, Starhawk is an Earth-based spiritualist who has known Grace since the beginning of Detroit Summer in 1993. Grace admired Starhawk's contributions to the entire generation of globalization activists, and we're really honored and privileged to have you with us today. to speak here and to be here today. I first heard about Grace, I think, when Margot Adair told me she had joined this new group called the National Organization for an American Revolution. And I thought, honestly, oh no, no another one of those. <laughs> but as I saw what Margot and Shay Howell and Bill all began doing in the way of organizing, I became more impressed. I was asked to go to Detroit uh, in the early 90s, I think it was the first year of Detroit summer, and I got to meet Grace and to see the amazing things that were happening in Detroit. Um, you know, my first thought at seeing the devastation there, the sort of blankness of the city where whole stretches of it just don't exist anymore. There's like literally nothing but vacant lots was, you know, if some external enemy had done this to an American city, we would be at war with them. Um, but what it has done it is the forces of corporate capitalism. So um, what does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> I want to talk about uh, Grace and to say, I think for me, Detroit Summer was incredibly inspirational because uh, it showed what you can do, how you can take a problem like blankness and emptiness and turn it into an opportunity like gardens and creativity. Um, the way that it brought together youth and elders uh, now as I become more of an elder myself, I realize just how amazing it is to actually get you to sit down and listen to elders. <laughs> but Grace and Jimmy and the Box Center were also very good at getting elders to listen to youth. Yeah. You know, Grace would have looked at this moment and said, we are standing here at this time of these two enormous global crises the crisis of climate change and environmental meltdown and the destruction of the life support systems of the planet and the crisis of this concentration of wealth and power in the fewer and fewer hands and the immense violence and brutality which is directed particularly at the bodies of people of color and people of less economic status uh, but against, really against all of us in order to maintain that system. And she would have understood and did understand that these two are the same crisis. They're not separate. That those forces that maintain that level of brutality and control are the very forces that prevent us from dealing with climate change. So Grace, I think, to me, was a great example of bringing together things across the divisions of thought bringing together the necessity to put your hands in the earth with the necessity to wage that struggle against the forces of power. Um, she taught me some deep spiritual lessons. And the first is that she always insisted that action should be balanced with reflection. I think a lot of us as activists feel like we got to be doing, 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 doing. And to really honor that, we also need to think about what we're doing and reflect on what we're doing and tune into the heart as well as the, hand, the hands and the head. Uh, she also understood that revolution has to be a process of personal transformation, not just seizing power and not just changing institutions, but to change institutions, we have to change ourselves. And to change ourselves, we also have to change institutions. She talked a lot about revolution as a change that would bring about fundamentally more loving relationships between human beings. And while she always understood the necessity for people to gather together in groups that reinforced identities and particular interests, she also understood revolution was about coalitions and about 
opening up and about involving everybody. Finally, I think Grace was an incredible example of that personal transformation in her own life, that she never stopped learning, she never stopped growing. Uh, I thought it was amazing to see someone who had been such a militant revolutionary deciding at a certain point, we need to look at the ideas of Martin Luther King. <laughs> Maybe the stuff about beloved community isn't all fluff. <laughs> Maybe this is what we need to be creating. So um, I want to just end with one little quote from Grace herself. We must challenge ourselves to engage in activities at the grassroots level that build a new and better world by improving the physical, psychological, political, and spiritual beliefs of ourselves, our families, our communities, our cities, and our planets. So, toward that end, we need to keep combining practice with reflection and urgency with patience. That is what I have learned after nearly seven decades of struggle for radical social change. <laughs>